who doesn't love the sound of a 24 pounder gun going off in the morning? Welcome back Legionnaires, we're here with another 1812 battle for you today and today we have another siege battle. This is the siege of Fort Meigs, uh, which took part, uh, took place in the war of 1812, but we are into the year 1813 when this takes place. Um, this is a siege at the end of April, about 28th of April to the 9th of May 1813, so quite a short siege. There you go, another glorious 24 pounder round going off. Obviously this battle is between the United Kingdom and the United States of America. It was in fact an American victory as the British did abandon the siege. Um, it's not a, a battle I really know too much about but uh, there was a whole like sort of coalition of British Native Americans that were loyal to like the British or like uh, sided with the British and also the uh, Canadian uh, were there as well. As you can see we have some of those uh, Indian forces here on horseback ready to go in. I'm certainly looking forward to this one that is for sure. This is the 1812 uh, cores that are being used so you can see we have Drummond here. I think they are all Drummond cores that we have uh, here. There are four uh, armies on both sides. I'm not sure what core the Americans are using, but yeah, it looks like it's Drummond on every single one of these. But uh, yeah, as you can see, the Americans are dug in around Fort Meigs here and are getting ready for this battle. And I've been told that this is an absolute grind fest. Apparently, it's like World War One sort of like level of destruction in this Napoleonic battle here today. I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, the Americans may have won this battle in history. They did lose about 10 times the amount of men that the British did lose in this siege as we have a rocket artillery coming as well. Oh, it's glorious. It really is. This mod truly is one of the best around. And if you want to see more glorious line battles, epic cavalry charges, and some bombastic cannon volleys, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment show you support. It really does help out the channel. I'm really looking forward to this one, that is for sure. This army actually, funnily enough, uh, for the uh, British was mainly made up of Native Americans. There was um, about three times the amount of Native Americans as there were, like British regulars and um, and Canadian Canadian militia as well. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. I, I'm interested to see whether they do have lots of Native uh, Americans. They do seem like a front line here at least to be made up of a lot of Native troops. And if they have got lots of Native Americans, they are not as good as those uh, British Redcoats. So it'll be interesting to see if the quality does make a difference in today's battle. I don't know who wins this one, so definitely worth sticking around to see uh, for yourselves who wins it. As you can see on the uh, on the map, everyone is really concentrated in this one area. So it's going to be an absolute grind fest over a, a small front here. And yeah, it should be a fun one, that is for sure. We have some light company infantry here, firing away. The Americans look like they're fairly well dug in. Fort Meigs here is um, in the back. It's ready to uh, be defended. Looks like they've got troops up here ready to go. Looks like some actual like sort of American uh, infantry that must like regulars. I imagine they have plenty of militia of their own. Looks like these are maybe like the Marines. These look like the Marine units anyway. They look awesome. They really do. Uh, we actually had a uh, replay recently with America in it. They were helping the uh, the Frenchies in a custom battle. And they do pretty well. They bring a lot of militia. Uh, as their army at this point is not that not entirely professional. They're relying on their own militia to raise troops. They've actually got cavalry right in the front lines here. I feel like these guys might need to get back. Um, I feel like they're in danger of being like, shot by friendlies. Or even worse, being shot by... Uh, enemies as well. What have we got over here? We have some, yeah, militia. Dundas, Dundas embodied militia. This looks like, uh, oh, this is another uh, storm and militia. I was going to say, these guys are like, you know, it's going to be pretty good. They're Scots, but they are still all militia. It doesn't really make much of a difference. I think there are few, uh, only a few units that can form a square, including Quebec Benspool, they can form a square. There are some actual line infantry back here somewhere, I think. Those are all fencibles. Um, these look like they could be professional troops. Yeah, Brunswick, 104th foot. They look fairly more professional. Same from fencibles. The fencibles are basically militia. Uh, there you go, the King's Irish foot. And then we have the first Somersetshire foot there as well. So we have some actual infantry. New Brunswick sappers as well. So we've got some, uh, some sappers there. They'll be pretty useful. 
And then, yeah, but it does seem like, again, a very much a militia orientated oh, army. And there you go, we have a cavalry charge there from the Onotario Light Dragoons. That actually, uh, I don't know really what it attempted to take out, maybe the, the skirmishers? It's even that, but the Americans force forwards with their own cavalry here. Some Dragoons by the looks of it, maybe, and they uh, managed to rout the British cavalry. As you can see now, we've got uh, militia coming up this side of the hill, and they are going in to try and deal with these uh, these Americans. So these look like dismounted goos or something like that. By the looks of their hel like the style of their helmets, so that's kind of an interesting unit. But yeah, it does seem like the British are going to make a bit of a push around the side of this hill here to try and get the fort from another angle. They've got more bensibles coming forward here. They're sending forward their own light gun. They're getting very, very close to these infantry units because, well, I guess accuracy is not that great for them. They're going to get pretty good point blank range. And also, there's a fair amount of body um, and some barricades that the Americans uh, are using. And they're, in fact, effectively using this, uh, this slope really nicely. I don't know why they're bothering to fire because they can't uh, shoot anything themselves. Um, they're, like, their angle that they're trying to, they're firing, like, into the front of the slope right now, but it is also protecting them quite nicely. Artillery still going off, killing Americans being kept in reserve, and now the artillery from the fort, from Fort Meigs Sir, itself, also Sir, starts to fire. But yes, if you have any epic NTW3 battles that you want to send in, feel free to uh, send them into my Discord, the link's down below in the description, you can go and check that out, along with also my Instagram as well, which I do occasionally post. Uh, what I'm up to uh, occasionally. So if you want to follow that as well, you're more than welcome to. This is actually going to be one of my final uh, NTW3 battles using 9.3. Not one of my final NTW3 battles. Do not worry, there will be plenty more of those to come. Um, but we do have the, uh, as I'm recording this video, 9.4 has come out. So we now have uh, new cores that have been uh, added, including 1814 uh, cores uh, and new maps as well. So, uh, yeah, well, I'll be installing that, which means that all my uh, 9.3 replays will be outdated and uh, will be corrupted. So we'll be moving on to 9.4 replays, which will be very exciting to see. These Caldwell Rangers back in need to hold their fire because they keep shooting into the back of their own troops. That's not very good. You might not like the Scottish militia, but it's, it was, it's very useful. I like how they're called Stormont Militia. I'm pretty sure Stormont's in Northern Ireland. But they're kitted out like, um, kitted out like the, uh, the Scots. There might be a Stormont, I guess, in, um, also in Canada. I don't know. Or in, or in Scotland. I don't know. But here we go. An assault coming in. We have the Ottawa, Ottawa, which, uh, I presume a Native American here. They have, like, well, I imagine so to say, wolf heads. My gosh, it's a scary looking unit, actually. They just charge in. They must have pretty good melee stats or something. They just charge straight on in, and so do the Oxford Militia. They're trying to use bayonet charges to break on through here. Oxford Militia, yep, all getting routed. It looks like some more militia going in here as well. Kent Militia going in. All failed to break through, and now we're going to see another assault here from more militia. They're going to try and just break, break on through. Yeah, the new Foundling Pencils have been forward. Absolute chaos, got some cavalry in the hair as well for the Americans. They're trying to slow stuff down here from the Americans, yeah. Chasing down these uh, Native American troops. We're going to see a counter charge now from the Native American cavalry coming in. Oh my gosh. And there you go, they routed them. Very, very nicely done. What an epic start to this historical battle. I like how the... Uh, Pencils here just getting down their own militia. Like, how dare you retreat? So the King's... Oh, this is the another King's Irish foot there. And the third. I guess we have... We do have four of the same four, so we will see multiple of the same unit. But the St. John's Pencils here as well. Again, pushing hard on this flank here. There are plenty of Americans in reserve, though. And it looks like we've got some of their own Native Americans fighting on their side as well. So, yep, that did happen quite often in North America. You had oh, Native Americans fighting on both sides. We're still going to see a cavalry charge here in a moment. No, nope, maybe they changed their mind. It looked like they were going to go forward. Cavalry going in Quebec. Uh, Light Dragoons having a break through. The center here has kind of crumbled for the Americans. 
Only some Newfoundland defensibles remain in that center. We've also got some big, big guns here. These might be 24 pounders for the uh, Americans as well. Or something like that. They are huge guns. But they're set on a very nice little uh, hill here. And observe the uh, British advance. I'm sure they're going to try and pound some of these British lines as they uh, move forward. But yeah, even though the British might be about to take this, uh, this first line of defense, there are plenty more lines of defenses to be held by the Americans who charge into this light company. I think the light company are going to get routed here. Oh, maybe not. I thought maybe they would, but... No, not today. And there you go. The, uh, the Native Americans going to counter charge here, get that axes out and start taking some scouts. Oh my gosh, look at the fire coming in. It's insane. That's the, uh, the rockets causing that effect. Here we go, more American cavalry running across the front here. Maybe going for the British, uh, I think going for the British cavalry, yeah. Making sure those Native Americans can't get in, causing havoc. The Glengarry pencils here, though, have been caught out as well. They cannot form square. I think these Quebec fencibles have formed square, though, in uh, preparation for the cavalry. It looks like that light dragoon there, or that dragoon here anyway that's gone in, or whatever it is, it actually route some infantry. I don't think that was his purpose. He definitely got Native Americans now charging here. Look at this. Charging the militia. Some Native Americans are being swayed to help the uh, Americans, not the British. And they have actually routed those, uh, those fences there. We've got cavalry again charging in here. It looks like the King's Irish can form square. One of the few regular units that are actually here on the battlefield. We're going to see a counter charge now from the Americans with infantry. And this front line here is crumbling for the British. The uh, Navy infantry going in, taking out some dispensables in the flank, but they themselves have been broken by a counter charge from the New Brunswick flood infantry. And the Glencarry uh, fence walls are back up, and my gosh, what a mess of a fight this is. Seriously, seriously, it's chaotic. Um, yeah, the left flank a little bit more quiet, but his right flank is looking hectic as hell. We have cavalry going in here, going for a, uh, an 89th foot. They can form square, though. Blaney's Bloodhounds, what a name. And you've got the Royal Montreal Cavalry also here as well. They're trying to... Uh, Scare off some of this cavalry. They need to be careful. This is the cab of Britain because there are stakes as well littered around here, so they can't go charging forward. Britain is still engaged along the front here. What we've got in the fight is more than like Native Americans here fighting well, other Americans. Both sides break there. America comes forward again, again charging into the 89 foot squares. Didn't loot, learn a single thing there. Britain is somehow holding on with its King's Irish foot here against wave after wave of Americans. But morale would say they're not going to hold forever. It's on red morale. They're probably scared of other units breaking around them. And the cavalry there, look at that. Royal Montreal cavalry. You need to be careful with the stakes. It just run through somewhere and got routed. And there you go. They finally broke. I don't know why they didn't retreat these fences. They might as well have knew what's going to happen. The Americans were going to start attacking them. And it seems as though America has finally had enough. He's going to retreat. And again, another charge forward from American cavalry. What an absolute nightmare this battle has been for like, both sides already. Like, it has been chaotic as hell but American troops going in here against the light fencibles in the center as they try to reclaim that central trench Native Americans here as well battling away these look like more uh, regular infantry here that America sent forward looks like Britain's going to get kicked out of here 
Those native troops be sent packing. Our men are running, sir. We've actually got American troops across the river over here, and they're shooting into the flank of the British. The British are actually they're like, turning infantry to try and deal with these skirmishes. But uh, yeah, they, the, the sweep up on this side here is not really come uh, at all. Whether it's because this right flank over here is just so chaotic, I do not know. But yeah, the Americans just keep on setting troops forward. Again, look like uh, proper regular troops here, fighting literally fence walls. They've got probably terrible morale. What have we got in here? Oh, British cavalry. Oh, no, sorry, British cavalry. American cavalry. Essex militia helping to win their fight now, charging to the side of these Americans. Seems like Britain's running out of reserves on this side here. I mean, he's got some uh, new Brunswick sap sappers coming forward. There's a few troops rallying back here. And it looks like we're going to see the reserve come forward here. We've got the British Incorporated Militia. Fighting top hats, by the way. They look very dapper. We do have the first Somersetshire, but they're pretty good. Our men are running. And more Kings uh, Irish. Yeah, it's looking pretty rough right now for the British. Certainly on this right flank here, the Americans are doing a very, very good job. But in the middle, where the uh, British are making their biggest push, it's not looking so great. It's hard to also gauge how much the Americans have left. And it, right now, it's hard to see how the British are going to even assault Fort Meade. I mean, they don't ever in history, I guess. But uh, I imagine that is going to be the, the objective today, is to take Fort Meade into... To hold it, that will be the British objective. Some American infantry falling back here. These um, infantry kind of look like the early carabineers in the skirmishes that uh, France can get. In a weird way. We've got more Somersetshire foot coming forward here. More regular infantry these guys are. Swiss mercenaries. New Brunswick infantry here as well doing their bit. The King's Irish, a battered King's Irish, I'll, I would add. The states here are just, yeah, brutal. But any sort of cavalry assault makes it pretty much impossible. Got artillery as well interspersed, and that's shelling any just any British units get too close. Not as big a gun, but it's still pretty damn deadly for the British infantry right in front of it. Fire when ready! Oh boy, yeah, carving through those fencibles right in front of them. Okay, so we are back. Uh, yeah, so me zooming out of that cannon over there, or this one in fact, uh, when it fired, it actually crashed the game. So yeah, that was fun. I think we're back sort of where we left off. Uh, we do have a cavalry charge going in there from the American cavalry. Going to try and break through this offensive uh, line here, or his militia. For the King's Irish for him, just a bad and bruised. Pretty, pretty beaten. But yeah, they're trying to hold on. So yeah, I think we're basically back at the point where we left off. I'm not entirely sure we might see, uh, we see a few bits. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah. We have, uh, uh, Native Americans here going in. Looks like they're going to get sent packing by some of these, uh, these Somersetshire uh, yellow banded robbers. We've got some more of this Odawa, Ottawa coming up here. So these are like, I presume, is that Ottawa? They're like Canadian Native Americans or something like that? Like, in that sort of region, I'm not entirely sure. With the first Somerset chef, but coming up here, these are more elite infantry, more well trained guys. Yeah, that Odua Ottawa is going in and they're battling away again against these American regulars down here. Trying to break through. It is still a brutal, brutal line fight that's really going on over here. 
Yeah, we've still got that little skirmish unit still firing over there. I think that's just like, I think we're basically back to the same point. Yeah, the British are actually committing three infantry units now to try and take out this one unit. It is nuts. Like, I mean, just send in the Brunswick Fencibles just to charge these guys or something like that. It's just crazy for the amount of forces you're using to take out one the little skirmisher. Are must I mean, really, this one skirmisher here should do the job. Halifax are rifles, but oh no, that's not allowed, apparently. You can see the Americans are retreating some troops here. Trying to get these guys back. Bring in some more control. These kind of look like grenadiers or something like that. They look interesting, that's for sure. Um, I mean, the Marines do count as grenadiers, apparently. They are up here. These are probably some of the most elite troops that they have. I imagine all the American armies have some sort of elite troops here. I don't know who these are. These are like saps or something. They're in this final defense. I'm just inspecting what they have in reserve, to be honest. They're relatively professional as well to those, those infantry. I imagine these are the most elite infantry that they have left in the fort. Manning those guns up there. Oh my gosh, the artillery and like, the rockets when they land. Oh, it's just a pretty picture. I like how you have some uh, cavalry here for the Americans in the red coats. They just want to be the British, really. This is just such a copycat. Gar America. Shameful. Yeah, Britain sort of looks a lot, thin, a lot more thinned out. They've been very aggressive, as they have to be. They have to take this fort. They've thrown in a lot of militia, a lot of uh, native troops, and they are just... Well, they've been focused down every time they can charge for them. And this poor Glengarry light fencible here has been absolutely shelled to pieces by that artillery piece. The one that damn well crashed my game. But uh, yeah, it does seem as though the right flank over here has been absolutely shattered by the Americans. Though they have uh, taken a fair few casualties themselves, like, look at the amount of troops there are left. Not many, there's a lot of skirmishes. There are some actual proper line infantry units here as well, but not many. Looks like Britain now is just gonna resort to shelling positions with the, the uh, Congreve rockets. And then, I guess, maybe hope for the Americans to make an assault. We've actually got a lot of infantry set up over here as well. Jeez, there's the Congreve rockets going up. Trying to hit big blobs of uh, formations that uh, little skirmish has finally broken. And then we're now going to see the 104th Brunswick foot go around, the, around this uh, slope along with some Brunswick uh, fence balls. And they're just going to flank on around and make another angle for this assault onto the port. Trying to stretch out those American defenses, but it seems like they've got plenty of reserves. They've got more, like, sort of troops back in. More... It's like, they look like, um... I imagine they're just militia, but they do look like they should be dismounted dragoons. But the helmet that they're wearing, they look very dragoon -like. I don't know if the British have got any, like, smaller guns that they could bring up. Because they've got these huge 24-pounders back here that we saw. And they've got the Congreve rockets. If they had something a little bit smaller that they could actually bring to the front lines and try and, like, use to punch through the American lines, that would be very useful because that's what the Americans have here with a few smaller guns able to support their lines. I mean, they've also got them in great positions here, like on uh, these slopes behind the trenches. They're in a really good spot. I mean, all the artillery going off really does give a bit of a World War One vibe. It really does. And the, like the actual trenches in front of the fort. Oh, yeah, really World War One sort of. I mean, as an American here in this position, you couldn't actually be able to tell what is coming over the trench. You wouldn't know how close the Brits are. You just know that they're there. Uh, mainly because in this world, we have floating flags above uh, units. So that's how you can tell when someone's there. No, I mean, you can just hear them. Just hear them and hear the, uh, the shouts getting closer and closer. And the musket volley is getting louder and louder. You gotta love the smell of musket fire in the morning. It does smell glorious. Oh boy. Here we go. Looks like Britain's gonna make a bit, bit of a bayonet charge here. Going in through St. John Fencibles. They look like they're gonna have to brace themselves. I need a counter charge. Here comes the cavalry. They're gonna form square of the uh, new guns with the And the cavalry there. And a lot of riderless horses. Fire a volley for King George. In goes the British cavalry as well on Atari Light Dragoons here. 
clashing for the Americans. A very good job there. Fire a volley from the Brunswickers. In come the uh, militia here. Trying to break through the square line. Oh my gosh, it's absolute chaos here. Fencibles being routed though. Only this uh, sort of like 104th foot is holding and it's still not looking that great. The light goons, they're having to like try and defend the flank against potential cavalry charges. So they might need to get out of there now because Britain has been kicked out of this small little pocket which they tried to form up. They've got more reserves here. Hold fire, he's shooting at the Dragoons. We're gonna need these Dragoons. I say we, I wasn't playing this battle. I feel this aligned with Britain. Being a Brit myself. Get rid of these damn Yanks. Get the first Somerset in, get them up there. Gotta replace the losses we've taken. Hopefully some British units will return. Um, what have we got back here? More Congreve rockets. Oh, right. Yeah, they, I think they went heavy on Congreve rockets. There may have been a rule saying they had to. I don't know. Britain does have forces over here, actually. I think these are just rally troops. They thought maybe was he going to try and sneak around the forest and attack the, the American flank. Would be kind of cool, but it doesn't seem like that is the case. Uh, Britain, it looks like, also has made another assault into... Uh, trench lines here. We've got some more of those Native American troops going in with the wolf heads on. Whether they actually are like really good melee, I don't know. It seems like they keep getting sent in and they keep dying. They might break the Americans here though. No? It looked like they might for a second, but they did not. So the Americans stand strong all three units in this trench line here. We've got the first Royal Ponteus Pilates bodyguards. That's a very good unit. This is like a unit that's used across uh, like the British Army. Well, it's used in many different campaigns. So it's a seasoned unit. Small unit, though. Kind of good men. They broke instantly. My God, I was thinking very good in breaks like that. That's ironic, isn't it? But yeah, the Americans, they lost one of their units, but the other two were held strong. They helped route about four or five more British units. Insane. I don't know if Brit uh, Britain has the pushing power to break through. I mean, we look at the uh, the map here. You can see the uh, the blue. It's starting to thin out a bit. Got the blues here. I mean, the closer and closer they get to the fort, the more and more deadly the uh, cannon fire is getting. And yeah, they fire a volley. And now the new bullets for them, she goes in. Uh, they migrate the Americans here. Oh, jeez, the artillery is going to be brutal. Just fired straight into the massive troops there, trying to break the Brits and their own men, probably. I think that it, it's got to be the Americans fighting there. The Americans counter charge here. Again, fighting Swiss mercenaries, so a decent unit. They broke the Americans here, and now they can flank the Americans if they choose to. I like how they got the Swiss mercenaries, because these guys fight in uh, red as well. Yeah, lots of infantry moving up here now for the British. Yeah, here come the, uh, the Americans. They're actually going to run across from one trench to another to try and challenge these guys here. Tying themselves out a little bit. This will be exactly what Britain wants. <laughs> trying to get the New Brunswick Infantry. I don't know why that one in particular, but there you go. And again, the battle for the trenches continues. The second layer of trenches won't be given up so easily. Or infantry breaking here. And there you go. The Brits did hold on, but they did cost them another infantry unit. And Britain can now use these trenches as well for himself. He can use them as a staging ground to protect his own troops. And then he can prepare for bayonet charges into the next couple of, like, trenches. He's got a little way to go there still. There's still a lot of Americans to get through. 
Oh my, and on this side here, as you can see the, uh, looks like the Sunset Chauffeur here. They're ha holding on with the Onotario Light Dragoons. Trying to hold back an American push here. The Brits, I think, moves up as well and are being slowly buffed by the, uh, by the American cavalry. Men of fatigue, sir, must rest English incorporated militia are holding on, but they are losing, and morale is not looking good either. That's just a lot of combat. Brave. The Americans did lose a lot of units here as well. As well. So there you go, it's looking good. Uh, it looks like that artillery is starting to chip away. Are we trying to make a breach in the wall? I don't know. But Britain's still looking quite strong over here, even though they did get uh, like an earlier wave to get pushed back. This looks a much stronger formation that's come up. Apart from this Quebec fencible, it's got absolutely railed by artillery. And there you go, it breaks because of it. Yeah, that unit just got like sprayed by artillery. Brutal. And the Americans are back in this trench. They are kicking the British out. Quebec fencibles didn't stand a chance as the American infantry can storm again. Again, the infantry that's been sent in by the Americans looks quite like standard infantry, regular infantry. It's good. Good infantry. British fighting here in this trench, though. Got the 41st Welsh in here, the Invalids, led by Henry Proctor. A good English name. Come the King's Irish as well again trying to route these American regulars. They did it. Showing that the uh, it's only the regular infantry that seem to have the uh, the pushing power to break through these uh, American forces. There you go, looks like they're gonna take this trench. The Americans kind of thinning out in the center, but so are the Brits. Both sides finding each other to the very death. New Brunswick fencibles over here. They're trying to get good angles into these uh, units here. On the right flank again, America making another push here. Going against the British lines. They're going to find sterner opposition now with these regular infantry. Old men of Somerset. Don't let these damn Yanks through. They broke. How dare you? The general might have died as well. I think it might be Thomas McDougall here. And that is absolutely catastrophic for the British right flank. That is the case. Of, uh, that is the general dead. Yeah, Britain now has no right flank. America, if it wants to, could swing around and threaten the British center. British left though is being super aggressive now, making an assault clo very close to the fort. Artillery still firing in, absolutely brutal here. Cavalry charging through, routing the Onotario like dragoons. Also, looks like they're going to get some of these uh, these fencibles. The Quebec fencibles can form square, and I imagine their volleys did help route that cavalry there. These again look like very well trained uh, American infantry. The left flank kind of stalling a little bit here for the British as well. The sense though looking quite good. We have new. Oh, I've got to say, there's new Brunswick sappers right by the gate. They've just routed themselves. The guns are gone. It's looking pretty scary on that side for the Americans in the center.
left hand side though not looking so great carry coming forward again for the americans what will they go for i mean they've got plenty of targets that cannot form square versus canadian infantry is for the taking Somehow these New Brunswick Fencibles did manage to win that fight. I did think 117 men should really deal with about 16 uh, cavalry. The British have been kicked back here as all those Quebec Fencibles gone. Quite a handy unit because it could form square. Looks like the Americans' only pressure they're putting on this flank right now is some skirmishes. William Dunn, Dunlock here, is holding the line. He's incorporated a uh, in militia right now. Looks like the Swiss mercenaries are going to get a job, but they look like they were maybe going to assault the, the fort itself with the Americans and charge in some. Much need reinforcements. And there go the Swiss. And the Americans keep counter charging. Routing the Somerset ship foot there very easily. Oh, and the Royal Foot. Here, Palate, they might break round easily. Now, they've already been routed once. And it looks like a route chain route along the line right now for Britain. And there you go, the British line and centre is gone. I think the only British that are really left. Are uh, these ones on the left flank here and then there are also I mean there's a couple of units returning over here and the artillery and that is it I think the British are out of troops at the point and it looks like Fort Meeks is gonna hold it's it's gonna be held I mean the British didn't even manage to assault the walls that's how damn good they were for the Americans they were too good What a fight. I mean, it's been artillery heaven as this one, especially for the Americans. I mean, it's been glorious seeing the rockets as well, but I don't know how effective they've been. Some of those Scottish fencible units there being routed. Got with the uh, Simicet chauffeur here there, trying to hold on. some Cadwell Rangers left, I'm gonna fast forward now. But yeah, there you go, the battle, uh, or the siege of Fort Meigs has been a historical recreation. The Americans are gonna win again, but instead of the British just abandoning the siege, the Americans have defeated the uh, the Brits in the field. It was a glorious, glorious battle. Uh, we've got some big American units here, still alive and well. I don't know how much the Americans have left, if it's just this, I mean, it's been a pretty close battle and pretty brutal i mean look at the bodies in this one this has been an insane battle here you can see all the bodies just littered around in these trenches like hundreds dead and dying in these uh, yeah in this battle line here i mean certainly on this line here you can Our see running, like sir. the bodies as well when the uh the americans charge forward against the brits and just like wave after wave of americans coming in just to make sure that the uh that the british did break and you can see that the cavalry actually has arrived in the in the wings and is dealing with those American artillery, which is nice to see. What is left then? Oh, there's a couple of units here. Of fencibles coming forward, uh, and the New Brunswick, 104th foot, also coming forward again. Uh, morale, I imagine, is not looking great though, as these two units march forward, seeing all their comrades dead and dying, being shot by artillery. Oh my gosh! Look at that. The New Brunswick is flying. They are gone. Be the same for these Quebec fences we'll be sure in a moment. Yeah, that might be enough to rout them. 
Oh, sorry, he's really good at routing units. And there you go, a couple of volleys over the heads of the, uh, of the Quebec fence forces, enough to scare them off. And that is the victory for the US of A. So well done to them. So yeah, that is a defeat for the uh, UK. Well done to everyone that took part in this battle. What a battle. What a siege that was. Really, truly was an amazing uh, battle to watch. I really did enjoy it. Definitely gave me World War One vibes. Like, everyone that took part in it played, like, and played it said it felt like that. You, like, moving from trench to trench, artillery just coming in. It felt insane. Um, so hopefully I put up the end results for you guys to have a look at. Um, this was sent in by Johnny Le Buffoon, who was playing as one of the UK Army. So thank you very much to him. We'll have a quick look at his unit stats as well. His new Brunswick 104th foot getting 149 kills. The 103rd King's Irish foot getting 102 kills. And then, yeah, his Congreve Rockets getting his fourth most kills is a, is a bad sign, really, that the infantry did not do that well in today's battle. Um, sad to see his Somerset, Somerset uh, foot do so poorly as well. But, yeah. It would be uh, interesting to see how all the British armies did. I'm sure you guys will be able to see on the end results. Um, but, yeah, I imagine... Not many kills compared to the Americans. But there you go, guys. That is the Siege of Fort Meigs for you today. Another historical battle done. Another one off the list. And what a battle this was. It really was. Do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new on here, and a comment to show your support. And I'll see you guys in the next one.